All right, everyone. Hello, my name is Austin Flannery. I'm a meteorologist with the National Weather Service Tampa Bay. Now that we are getting into June and approaching the conclusion of what we like to refer to as our meteorological spring, it seemed like a good time to go ahead and recap what we've seen over the last three months in terms of temperature and rainfall data from across West Central and Southwest Florida. So this information was developed in conjunction with Paul Close. He's a senior meteorologist with the National Weather Service Tampa Bay and the climate focal point, or if you will, kind of the resident expert on all things climate. So it would not be possible to have compiled all this information without his assistance. So what happened in spring of 2020? Well, temperatures in general were above average for many locations, and a number of these actually made their, one of their top 10 warmest springs on record. Now, rainfall is a different story, though. Uh, it was a dry start for pretty much everyone, and uh, there's still been some places that are pretty dry. But overall, we've seen a much more wet trend, especially now as we're approaching the conclusion of spring. And uh, ultimately, that's kind of led to rainfall totals while starting out really low, ending up pretty close to normal or slightly below for a lot of spots. Up on the screen, I have a temperature map of the average spring temperatures for the last three months. So across the board, our temperatures were generally anywhere from the, the mid to upper 70s, with some of the northern areas, of course, seeing a little bit cooler temperatures and extreme southern areas definitely in those upper 70s there. And these temperatures overall are a bit above what we would normally expect for this time of year. That actually led to a number of our sites achieving their warmest or, or top 10 warmest uh, springs on record. So on the screen, you'll see the city name and then a, a, a year in parentheses. That's the year that this climate site started reporting data to the National Weather Service. So um, for some of these locations, we have in excess of 100 years worth of data, and that's definitely considered to be a pretty robust data set. All of these sites, though, at least 50 years, and that's still a good amount of data. The widely accepted standard uh, in the atmospheric sciences community is at least 30 years of data to start really kind of assessing those longer term trends. And that's also what is uh, recommended by the World Meteorological Organization and is our guidelines within the National Weather Service for climate sites and kind of when we start considering the data to be official and long running. So all of these sites have pretty robust sets. So it's impressive to see some of the, the numbers and uh, obviously Plant City and Sarasota, Bradenton specifically had their warmest year on record. Okay, that's all well and good, but, but how far off of normal are these temperatures? Well, area-wide, it everybody was above normal, and some locations anywhere from 2 to 4 or even 4 to 6 degrees above normal. And when we start talking about temperature differences that are that high, when we can measure to a tenth of a degree with our current instrument accuracy, that's pretty significant of a difference. So it varied um, above normal for sure, some places pretty far above normal. Okay, so switching gears a little bit, uh, rainfall ended up actually not being quite as interesting in terms of totals. Area-wide, 6 to 8 inches was uh, certainly pretty much seen everywhere. Uh, many spots saw more than that, though, especially uh, across portions just south of Tampa Bay, extending into parts of the interior, as well as parts of the northern nature coast as well saw that. But it was still pretty variable across the area, and specifically I kind of want to draw your attention to an area of central Polk County, eastern Hillsborough, where we kind of see those totals pretty rapidly change, and um, that was reflected pretty highly in our precipitation that we actually saw. So across the interior, we had a lot of variability in terms of rainfall. That map just kind of highlighted it. Places like Winter Haven, Lakeland, and Plant City all were quite dry. Even Bartow was still a little below normal, but a lot closer. Then as we head further south to say somewhere like Archbold Biological Station down in Lake, or a little south of Lake Placid in Southern Highlands County, they had one of their wettest years on record, their 12th wet, wettest, so with almost with over 11 and a half inches of rain that fell in the spring. So we saw a lot of that variability, and in large part that's due to just those afternoon showers and thunderstorms. A lot of those heavier rain totals have happened fairly recently within the last uh, few weeks. But the real story with rainfall comes from southwest Florida, which managed to stage quite the comeback in terms of rainfall over the season. On the right, you'll see an animated GIF of 
uh, the drought situation over the last three months. And to start off the season, it was very dry. But as you'll probably notice, that we've seen a positive trend in, tor in terms of rainfall over the last uh, month especially. And um, especially even just within the last few days, both Punta Gorda and Fort Myers have had a significant amount of rain from those afternoon thunderstorms. And that's allowed them to come up above normal for the season, and that's excellent to see. However, just a couple heavy days of rain don't remove the concern for drought. We need to see a consistent pattern of rainfall, and we're certainly starting to see that now which is why we're, things are trending down drought-wise. And overall, across the entire region, we've seen that with much more widespread showers and thunderstorms. And with that expectation continuing, we should see that continued improvement. So it's great to see these sorts of things already starting to take shape. Now, this graphic here just gives you an idea of how far off from normal we are. And widespread across the area, you probably notice those grayish tones with a little bit of... Uh, maybe some yellow mixed in there, that suggests that we're pretty close to normal. Now, once you start getting into those greens and blues, which you see a pretty good swath of there just kind of south of Tampa Bay, extending into the interior portions of Florida, that area actually was indeed above normal, and we see that from some of the rainfall reports and, and measurements that we've been able to collect from across that area. So outside of that little swath, generally speaking, everybody was pretty close to normal. So if you're looking for more information about where you can find this information and get some more detail on it, I've just kind of presented a, a brief overview of it. You can check out our website. If you go to our homepage, weather.gov slash Tampa Bay, right at the top, you'll see under the news headlines section, you'll see a, a uh, headline that says either preliminary May and spring 2020 climate summary, or it just says May and spring 2020 climate summary, depending on when you look at it. You'll see that up there for at least the next uh, week or so. After that time, and really at any point if you want though, you'll always be able to access this information if you go under the climate and past weather tab, and then uh, click on climate summaries and write-ups, you can access this information at any time if you don't see it in our top news section. So if you have any further questions about any of the information that's been presented to you, please feel free to drop us a comment, and we'll be sure to respond to those accordingly. Thanks so much for tuning in, everyone. Have a great day.